Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the inaugural episode of Tribal Talk, where we're going to be bringing you all things Wetumpka High School Athletics. I'm your host, Dustin Lee, and these three fine gentlemen to the left of me, Gavin Baxley, Evan Ward. Hey, Dustin. Taylor Gunn. Glad to be here. It's wonderful to have you three guys here. Anyway, we're going into our second season at the Wetumpka Sports Complex after leaving the historic Hohenberg Field, finishing last year with a record of 5-6 and six and losing in the first round of the playoffs to a good school in Sarah Land. Last year we were coached by Tim Perry, but this year we have a completely new helm manning this ship. we got Coach Bugs, new defensive coach, Chandler, offensive coordinator, Harrison, special teams, and Tatum, a new offensive line, and of course, the bear in the room, Coach Bear Woods. Do you guys think this new staff is going to be an overall net positive for the Wetumpka Indians? Absolutely, I do. I mean, just taking a look at last season, you know, we've we've brought in a lot of new guys, and they've just really brought a new energy to the whole team. And a new even, feel, new feel to the team. Absolutely, yeah. and they've they've really gotten you know the fan base in, involved more, yeah. and, and you can just tell that the environment you know within the team and within the fan base has just completely changed this last season. You know, environment's really going to help the team, though. Know, roots up the boys, gets them playing the best they can. Evan, you got anything to add? Um, I do believe under this new offensive coordinator that our offense will definitely thrive this season, and I think our defense will stay exactly how it's been, you know, just great overall. I don't know. Defensively, I think we're going to get better. I mean, it's the defensive head coach. He's played defense for the last few years. He's, he's ready to go. I love how he's out there on social media. He's getting everybody ready for the season. He's getting the school involved. I think it'll be great. Nate Rogers, coming off of his first year as a starter in varsity last year, had a solid season. Nothing incredible, but a solid season for a first-year quarterback. And, you know, Wetumpka has always been a defensively-based team. And do you guys think that Nate – well, Nate Rogers is looking to improve, of course. You know, he, of course. he wants to win. But do you think he's, he is going to improve and Wetumpka is going to be able to throw this pigskin down the field this year? Yeah. I mean, he, he wants to make plays. And that is a big thing in a high school football player. He wants to make plays. He's going to make plays. Last year he had a great throw in the Tallahassee game, game winner, that kind of thing. He has the ability to win. He's got the ability to win, and he doesn't give up. I haven't seen that in him. He doesn't just walk off the field frustrated. He's ready to go, ready to play. Right, and I, I'm with Taylor there. He's absolutely done a fantastic job. He kept his composure a lot last season through some really frustrating games at times. And so I know that I've seen him working this summer uh, to get better, and, and he looks absolutely ready to, to build off of what he did last year. And I think that experience is going to really help him out a lot more. I agree with that. I do believe that Nate Rogers can be a great starter for this varsity team. And not only is he great in the pocket, he is incredible mobile. He's a great mobile quarterback. He moves in and out of that pocket just like that. You know, it's a big thing now. You want to have a quarterback who can, you know, dual threat. You know, the, the game is changing. You know, you can't yeah. just stand still in the pocket anymore. You're just going to get rocked. You know, you need the ability to move, and it's great that Nate Rogers has that. So on to our week one matchup against Jeff Davis. Historically, we have a better record against them, and last year they finished 4-6, and six, coached by Rory Bell. Anyway, they had an average, uh, you know, 17 points a game, and, you know, we're looking forward to hopefully beating them. What do you guys think this matchup is going to be like? Well, offensively, I'd really say that we're, it's a pretty even matchup there. I mean, both teams averaging roughly 17 a game, like you said. And so then it just, it's really going to just come down to the defense. I mean, you know, last year, Wetumpka's strong suit was always the defense. And so I really think that it's going to be up to them to really be the deciding factor in this game. I'm Great going to agree guy. with that. I do believe that this will be a defense-based game. I do believe it will be lower scoring, hopefully a little more scoring than we got last year during this first week, but you know, I'm, I'm excited. It's good to be excited. I think the energy coming into this first home game for Wetumpka, first yeah, we, game we, of the we season. We can't forget it's a home game. All right, it's they're, a home they're, game. Okay, yes, of yeah. course. I, and they're gonna come in ready to go. I think offense is gonna put up some points for this game. Defense is gonna hold their own. I think it'll be a great matchup. Do you guys have score predictions for this week one matchup? Ooh. <laughs> Well, I hate to put you guys on the spot like that. But. Well, you know, it's it's tough to make a prediction just because it's it's week one. We haven't really seen anything so far, but um, you know, just based on based on what I've seen with Wetumpka and their their defensive mindset and stuff, I think that we're going to have a, a fairly low scoring game here. But uh, I believe the offense has really improved, so I'm going to say 21-10 Wetumpka. You know, I'm going to have to you know piggyback off of you a little bit, but I'm going to say Wetumpka doesn't score 21 points. I'm going to say Wetumpka gets 17 points with Logan Wayall hitting a game-winning field goal. Game-winning field goal. And Jeff goal. Davis scores 14 points. You think wow. it's going to wow. come down to the wire like that? 
I think it will. I think it will. I think it's going to be a very close game. That is a hot take from Evan Ward. I, I, I don't know if it'll be that close. I, I don't know. I think with Logan way all, you get into the red zone, you got guaranteed three points. Oh, it's, it's, it's a guaranteed. Tough, it's, it is guaranteed three almost. points. Almost. And so I think 24 to 10. Well, I'm going to come in with the last one here. I have 17-3 as my score prediction. Not not really an exciting game, but, you know, it's good energy to come in and, you know, beat a team, you know, that we, you know, historically do beat a lot. So Less fun for the viewers, more fun for the team, though. More, more fun for the oh, team, yeah. of course. You know, you want to come off the back of a good, solid win, especially in the first game home of the new season with a new coach, new staff, everything. It's important. So we're going to go over our uh, schedule here for the rest of the season. Are there any games that pop out to you guys that you just got to be there? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking for sure Stanhope Elmore. Even though it's not here in Watonka, I think that's a must watch. I think the team would love to see, you know, the away side of the field oh, just as just, full as just the home. just stacked yes. like it is here. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, obviously Stanhope is a big matchup, but then, you know, it's very important this season to, to – uh, capitalize on the home games and, and make sure that you can come out with a win each week that we're hosting the games. And so I think that one big one is going to be Greenville just because I mean, it's homecoming. You got to win in homecoming. Do got to win in homecoming. And I hate to be mean here, it is Greenville. So, <laughs> Taylor? I think Sydney and Lanier is going to be the big game to watch this year. I think we have our region games. This one's at home. It's the last one, last region game, and last home game. I think it will be very important to win this game. I think it will be very exciting to watch. I think you have to be there. Well, not only is it our last home game, it's also senior night. It is senior night. Well, I mean, night. I'd love to see our seniors show and up and show out. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Now, save the best for last. I know you three are really looking forward onto this one. Picks. <laughs> that's all they've been talking about. Picks. They just want to do picks. Picks this, picks that. So, gentlemen, give Listen. me your picks. Week one, well, not week one, uh, Benjamin Russell versus Silicaga. Benjamin Russell finishing with four and six. Last year, Silicaga seven and four. What do you predict, guys? I'm going to have to say Silicaga. Just just based on that record, I mean, Silicaga's 23rd and 5A. I mean, you can't really go up against that. I have to right go now. with Evan here. I think Ben Russell's defense is not strong enough to take on Silicaga's offense. I agree with that. I hate to be a follower, but I also got to go with Silicaga. I think they had a strong season last year, and they're going to build on it. And I've got family in Silicaga, yeah, so family. I got to well, You can't go against that. You can't, you can't go against the family. No blood's thicker than water. Anyway, I've picked Silicaga as well. I mean, what else is there to be said that these three gentlemen haven't already? I mean, we can go on about, like, you know, a broken record. So, Calera, 7-4 and four at Spain Park, 3-8. and eight. Give me your predictions, gentlemen. Well, you know, they're on the road, so Clear's going to be on the road, so that's going to be tough for them, but I think that they're going to be able to pull it out here. I think that this is a very winnable game for them and should be able to kick off a strong season for Clear. Uh, I'm going to say Clear as well, strictly because you know, Spain Park is 3-8. and 3-8. and eight. I mean, they're, they're 12th and 7A, but I think Clear is going to pull this out. Right, I agree. I think Spain Park is ranked higher this year, but... Last year's record, 3-8, and eight, I don't see much improvement from them. I think Calera is going to win even on the road. Have you guys ever been to a Calera home game? I have not. I have not. You guys should keep it that way. Terrible stadium. <laughs> anyway, Chilton County at Bibb County. And you know, I don't want to pick on Chilton County here, guys, but a record of 3-7. and seven. Bibb County, a record of 9-3. and three. Go ahead and say what I know you're going to say. Bibb County. You're taking Bibb County? Oh, well, yeah, duh, taking Bibb County. <laughs> I, I reacted like that was a strong take, but it's not. That's all I got. That's all I got to say about Big uh, County. Yeah, no, I, I'm got, got to go with Big County here. I, I think that Chilton County, you know, I think that they could be better than they were last season, but I'm not sure that they're going to be quite strong enough to be able to take out Bib. This Although year. Bib is a 4A, and uh, Chilton County is a 6A, I do believe that Bib is going to pull this out, just just because they they are the better team here. They are the better team, and I don't think there's any doubt in that. Yeah, I mean. I think Bibb County's got the win. I think Shilton County has good chances of winning here, but offensively I've never seen them put enough points on the board. You know, if it was a battle of who appears in the most Wetumpka highlights, I'd have to go with Chilton County. Absolutely. But, oh. You know, I think County. I'm just going to have to agree with you three. It's Bibb County. I mean, again, we, we hate to be negative here, but it is what it is. It, yeah. Oh, now here's a game, gentlemen. Now this one I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Auburn, 10-3 and three versus Hoover, a 12-1 and one in a neutral stadium at the Crampton Bowl. Well, you know, Hoover, you know, last year they had a 
fantastic season. Unfortunately for them, they couldn't come out on top there in the state championship. So I think that they're really going to be, you know, looking to, to come back for revenge this season and, and try and win the whole thing this year. And so I think that, you know, it being a neutral site, it may, you know, make this thing a lot tighter, but I think Hoover's going to come out on top. This is the kickoff classic, man. You can't not show up to this. I mean, Auburn. Ha I mean, Auburn's winning this game. I mean, I think it will, will be a close game, but I pick Auburn is going to win this. Auburn's going to take this one home. I got to dis disagree with you there. I think Hoover's got it. 12-1 and one last year, went to the state championship. I agree with Gavin. I think they're out for revenge here. I think they're ready to start the season I think strong. Auburn's going to stop out that revenge real quick week one. We'll see. Oof. It'll be close. Oof. Now, Evan, I hate to leave you on an island, man. Me, You're my brother, but I got to go with Mr. Baxley and Mr. Gunn. Hoover's winning, man. It's I, I, I just have that. to disagree with that. All, I think re all, really, I think Auburn is going to take this game. I think it will be close. Auburn's going to take this game there at Crampton Bowl. You know what, Evan? If you're right, you're right. You know we'll apologize, but I'm, until I'm we're proved an wrong, well, you know, <laughs> I won't apologize. I won't. <laughs> I'm sticking with my picks. All right, Pike Road at Hillcrest. Shoot. Well, you know, Pike Road. I mean, they won the state championship last year. 14 and 0 undefeated you know, what more can you ask for yeah. in the season they're, they're literally at the top so, you know right and so you know coming into this season they may they're, they're going to be good but they may be a little overconfident you know and so I, I really think that hillcrest may take advantage of that you know hosting them uh i just think hillcrest is going to come out on top I, I don't think you can argue with a 14 and 0 record i mean i'm i'm going pike road here they won the chip last year like you said uh i think they're beating hillcrest it's a great introduction into the 6a i think this team is ready I'm going to have to go with Hillcrest here. I mean, they're at Hillcrest. Pike Road, while they were 5A state champions last year, they're coming up to 6A now. I think Hillcrest will prove a little too tough for them on the road. Well, I'm going to go with Pike Road, undefeated champions. But Hillcrest might have a chance if the refs let them sneak a couple, you know, double passes in here and there. <laughs> Fultondale at Hopeville. What do you guys got? Uh, I'm going to take Hopeville here. Uh, Hopeville's... You know, kind of had a shaky past, but I mean, they're shaping up. They're shaping up. I'm going to go Holtville here. I mean, they're 28 and 5A, and they're going up against the 4A uh, for Fultondale, who's 49th. I mean, you, you can't really lose that one. But I think it's not going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be a closer, closer game think than we think. It's going to be a close game. I think so. Like down to the wire? Or? Uh, maybe not down to the wire, but I think within a score or two, it's going to be it's going to be closer than people think. Real nail biter, barn burner. Yeah. yeah. See, now you were doing really good. Okay, I was <laughs> I was with you all the way through, but then you said it's going to be a close one. I got to disagree here. I think Hopeful is going to come in and they're going to you know be ready to go. Blowout. Hopeful wins it easily. And you got to give credit to him also. You know, a couple of years ago, I mean, Hopeful was 0 and 10 back to back seasons. I mean. So to come from that all the way to, you know, last season, six and six, you know, they make the playoffs. They're competitive every week now. And so, you know, I really think that they're going to continue to trend upward here and, and show it in week one. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Hopeful has been making some changes. They've been improving over the last couple of years. I think Hopeful wins it by a good bit in here, and I think Fultondale can't come up on the road. Hate to be a sheep, but I'm gonna go with Hopeful as well. You know, the only school I've ever seen to have a marching band wearing bandanas. It's a fashion trend. It really is. Very fashion interesting trend. fashion trend. I'd, I'd say more of a statement. Uh, Shades Valley, three and seven at No Hope, Stan Hope. What do you guys say? Well, I hate to do oh, it. Come on, Gavin. But I'm gonna have to go with Stan Hope here. You know, both these teams, they had, you know, underwhelming seasons last year i'm sure they're both both teams are fairly disappointed in how they did but i think that stanhope you know they're going to come in and and want to to really improve upon last season and, and you know have more success you know just moving the ball downfield they i mean really offensively they struggled significantly last season and so i think they're going to come in and, and be ready this time uh, get a nice win to start off but then you know as the season goes on they may still see some struggles along the way you know, Shades Valley, three and seven, six, 36th and 6A schools. They're uh, 87th in Alabama. Stanhope, four and six. 26th and 6A, 69th in Alabama. You, you're about to say something incredible because you're going in on here, man. No hope, Stanhope, baby. <laughs> Let's go, Shades Valley. Yes. All right, Taylor. 
Gonna have to go with Stanhope here. It's at Stanhope, one of Wetumpka's regional games here in the future. I think Stanhope will start the season off with a win. The records are close from last year, but I think Stanhope's been making improvements, and I think they will come out on top. I hate to leave a house divided, but Evan, I'm with my boy Evan. I, I simply cannot pick Stanhope to win. You can't See, pick if it own. was a perfect world, Stanhope would go winless every year, but of course we don't live in a perfect world. But if you two are taking Shades Valley, I mean, if you're taking Stanhope to beat Shades Valley, you're taking our rival to win. Well, I'm not, I'm that's, not going for look, it. That's, that's right. We're not going for them here. We're just, you know, picking the team that we think is going to win. And that's, for one rare occasion, we think Stanhope is going to win this. That's, that's like being an Auburn fan and want, not wanting, but picking Alabama to win. You can't do that, even if Alabama is a better team. It's a matter of principle. I mean, you, you really can't. I, I could never, never pick Alabama to win a, a football game. Well... That's disappointing, man. With Warrior. me as usual, Gavin Baxley, Evan Ward, Taylor Gunn. I'm your host, Dustin Lee, and this has been the first episode of Tribal Talk. And remember, win the moment and go Indians.